Hey everybody, welcome back. Can't wait to get into today's Friday review. We've got a bit of a unique one. Every single week we're typically bringing you a product review, a book review, two new research studies, always current, always things that I think that you should know about as I filter through all the research each and every week. What do I think is best for you, your family, your loved ones, and of course, if you're a practitioner, your clients as well. Well, today we have one by popular request. I have such an amazing team at IHP, uh, my Cabral-based brand, and also Equalife, and they listen to our community, and when the comments start to come in and the questions come in around one particular topic, they bring it to me and they say, you know what, this has to be a podcast. So what I wanted to do was combine that because it's research and product recommendations all in one. Um, so I'm going to give you that. And this actually affects almost all women for about 35 years of their life, like anywhere between teenage years up to the early 50s. So this is a really important one. And it has to do with heavy metal exposure and why Berkeley Health has called it ubiquitous and unable to escape but easier ways now than ever to prevent exposure. So I'm gonna bring that to you, and then I also have a research study that I wanna share with you, one on how to reduce or eliminate chronic pain by actually focus on, focusing on something else other than the body. So this was great research as well. Wanna bring this to you because I've seen it happen in my practice. I'll bring it to you today. All right, so let's get started. We always do a little recap to start the show. Just back from sunny Northern California. I was out there over the past week doing a couple of podcast interviews. I always love to be able to hop on other shows when I can. Uh, my team knows that I reserve one to two spots per week to do interviews, uh, whether it be news or other podcasts or whatever it is. I don't always get a chance to mention those, but if they're of interest to you, just let me know and maybe we'll mention them more in these Friday reviews or we can start a separate podcast um, channel which is just me on other shows if that's of interest to you. So you let me know and whatever our community wants, we're gonna make it happen. All right, so that was that. Let's go over the podcast recap though because I wanna make sure that you are getting these shows each and every week. I know that it's a daily show but it's, it's on purpose. The goal is to get you a little bit of information every day to continue to increase your natural health knowledge. And now today is episode 3,101. So if you wanna to go to stephencabral.com slash 3101, all the show notes, the takeaways, everything will be there for you today. But you can also always search, stephencabral.com slash podcast, search back. The goal is a little bit every day so that over a year, two years, five years, your natural health knowledge expands. Not only is that great for you, it's great for everybody in your family, your community, and who knows, you might even become an integrative health practitioner and begin to help people with one of the most amazing and rewarding careers ever, which is a certified health coach. All right, so on Monday's show, episode 3097, it was the top 10 ways to pull yourself out of a slump. Let's face it, we all get there, myself included, and when we're in one of those lows, the blahs, and we feel like we can't get out of it, there are ways. I give you 10 ways to do that. All right, 3098 was understanding hormonal bloating. Seven causes and the main symptoms. And I go pretty in depth. So anybody who likes the science of understanding the menstrual cycle and how that could lead to hormonal bloating, here's a show for you. On Wednesday was the psychology of weight loss and actually using mind over matter. So mind over the body itself, which is so crucial because oftentimes when someone's trying to lose weight or even gain weight, they're focused more on their body than their mind. And then yesterday's show is the top three supplements for a healthy heart. Don't miss this show. It's literally everybody needs to be focused on this. I would say starting at like 39 years old. Like that's the minimum age that I would start at. It really is. And so check out that show. Just really simple, really straightforward. You might even be using these. I just give you the dosage um, that's going to work best uh, for most individuals. All right. Okay, so let's get into now that research that I spoke about uh, before we talk about the chronic pain. So research is from Berkeley School of Public Health, their medical school. I'm gonna link it up for you right now. That's at stephencabral.com slash 3101. And it goes over the first study to measure toxic metals in tampons, which shows high levels of arsenic and lead amongst other contaminants. I'm going to take a moment to read this to you because it's really important. You may not read it for yourself. That's okay. Uh, but I think you're going to be shocked 
because it's no longer just conventional tampons. There is actually a heavy metal in um, organic tampons that I want to speak about right now. And then what I want to do is give you alternatives, not saying that I'm in the expert by any way, shape, or form on alternatives to tampons, but I am going to give you all of the different possibilities. And then hopefully you'll comment in the comments as well and let others know uh, healthy, clean, safe brands for others too. All right. So tampons from several brands that potentially millions of people use each month can contain toxic metals like lead, arsenic, and cadmium, a new study out of UC Berkeley a researcher has found. Tampons are of particular concern as potential source of exposure to chemicals, including metals, because the skin of the vagina has a higher potential for chemical absorption than skin elsewhere in the body. In addition, the products are used by a large percentage of the population on a monthly basis. 50 to 80% of those who menstruate use tampons for several hours at a time. Despite this large potential for public health concern, very little research has been done to measure chemicals in tampons. All right, let's move on. To our knowledge, this is the first paper to measure metals in tampons. Concerningly, we found concentrations of all metals we tested for, including toxic metals like arsenic and lead. Metals have been found to increase the risk of dementia, infertility, diabetes, and cancer. They can damage the liver, kidneys, and brain, as well as cardiovascular, nervous system, and endocrine system. In addition, metals can harm maternal health and fetal development. Although toxic metals are ubiquitous, just means like literally everywhere in nature, that's where we talk about everyone should be running the vitamin tox test, or at least the minerals and metals test, everybody. Uh, and I'll talk about that in a moment. And we are exposed to low levels at any given time. Our study clearly shows that metals are also present in menstrual products and that women might be at a higher risk for exposure using these products. Okay, last paragraph. Researchers evaluated levels of 16 metals. Arsenic, barium, calcium, cadmium, cobalt, chromium, copper, iron, manganese, mercury, nickel, lead, selenium, strontium, vanadium, and zinc. Again, not all of these bad, but they're all metals. And 30 tampons from 14 different brands. The metal concentrations varied by where the tampons were purchased, US versus the EU and UK, organic versus non-organic, and store versus name brand. However, they found that metals were present in all types of tampons. No category had consistently lower concentration of all or most metals. Lead concentrations were higher in non-organic tampons, but arsenic was higher in organic tampons. Pretty remarkable. Wow. I mean, it's unbelievable. And they're basically just saying it's because cotton is absorbing a lot of these things that are naturally found in the soil, etc. So here's the issue, is that there is really no safe form of tampon. When we talked about this before, I did a podcast. You can look it up at stephencabral.com or you can actually just Google it too. You can just type my name, Stephen Cabral and toxic shock syndrome. I talked about this not too long ago. Honestly, it wasn't too long ago at all. And I talked about um, some women, although rare, but this is a real possibility, can get something called toxic shock syndrome. And that is from bacteria that builds up on tampons that are left in for too long. Now again, rare, but a real risk factor, specifically because it can cause fever, low blood pressure, rash, redness of the eyes and mouth, flu-like symptoms, GI issues, and confusion, basically like bewilderment. But it can also lead to serious life-threatening issues like uh, shock or multi-organ failure. So although if a woman is not keeping a tampon in for too long, this shouldn't happen. Uh, organic, hopefully a little bit better than non-organic, uh, but truthfully, it does not look like anymore. And that's why this is more of a public service announcement that there's any healthy forms of tampon. So if a woman's going to use a tampon, maybe you use it as least frequently as you can. Maybe there's a time and place, and of course you choose to do that. It's your body, you decide on that. But I wanted to give you right now, I believe I have seven of them, seven, alternatives to tampons. Again, not saying that I'm in the expert in any way, shape, or form, but my job is natural health, looking at natural health-based products and helping women and men in my practice. Okay, so the first one is this. I'm not gonna give you brands. If you have a favorite brand, shout it out in the comments. I don't mind at all. So the first one is this, menstrual cups. So menstrual cups can be reusable. They're typically flexible silicone, uh, silicone, so not plastic. And it allows you to insert this to actually collect menstrual-based fluid. All right, so that's the first one. 
The second one is a menstrual disc, a little bit different because it's inserted inside of the vagina right near the cervix to collect menstrual fluid in its own way. This one, I'm probably not, I'm probably not a proponent of this. I'd have to see more research. I don't know that they're doing any research on this, but there's still a chance that what is this made out of? What's the absorption of the material? And also, um, could there be a buildup of bacteria as well? So that's not a favorite of mine. Uh, some women do use it because uh, it can allow for, let's just say, easier intercourse, and so they decide to use a menstrual-based disc. And again, that's that's everyone's prerogative. All right, the third one is called, uh, and it goes by many different names, right? But period panties. So this is underwear designed with built-in absorption layers to allow for menstrual flow. Not dissimilar to pads, and so there's a few different pads I wanna bring you. One is reusable cloth pads. These, you're gonna look for organic, of course. Uh, these are able to be washed, they're eco-friendly, they can be reused, and some women opt for those because they don't want all the disposable ones that cause potentially eco-based concerns. All right, the fifth one, though, are the ones that are disposable. These are the typical disposable pads uh, that many women, most women, do know about. It's the main alternative to tampons are these disposable uh, pads. Again, just look for chemical-free, unbleached as much as you can, all the things that you want to look for. Okay, the next one is period swimmer. So there's actually bathing suits created with absorption layers. So for light to moderate flow is how they're rated, and those would be able to be used swimming-wise without a tampon. And the seventh one I didn't know about. I actually had no idea. I looked this one up. I like to do my research. This is called a natural sea sponge. So natural sea sponges can be inserted into the vagina to absorb menstrual fluid, like a, like a tampon, but a natural sea sponge. So may not, should not, have all the toxic metals. Now I will say though, any time that you're allowing for a collection and buildup of menstrual fluid, there can be that bacterial buildup. So I think there's still the possibility of that toxic shock syndrome. There might be the possibility of other metals potentially. So I don't know if it's as high on my list, but if more research is done, could be a viable option. All right, so I wanted to bring that to you today. Hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully you share this with, uh, if you are a practitioner, like an integrative health practitioner, share it with all of your female clients and of course family friends as well. All right, let's go over one more research study for the day. I mean, this is really remarkable, but I'm telling you right now, natural health practitioners see this in their practice and so do psychologists, they really do. So let's look at the study name so I get you that specifically and it is a new way to reduce or eliminate chronic pain using just the mind. Okay, so this is out of the University of California, Los Angeles Health Sciences. It was just published three weeks ago. All right, so this is brand new. A new study led by UCLA Health and the U.S. Veterans Affairs Office found chronic pain among older adults could be significantly reduced through a newly developed psychotherapy that works by confronting past trauma and stress-related emotions that can exacerbate pain symptoms. It was published in JAMA Network Open. The study compared the newer therapy known as Emotional Awareness and Expression Therapy, or E-A-E-T, to traditional cognitive behavioral therapy, or CBT, in treating chronic pain as well as mental health symptoms such as depression, anxiety, and post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, uh, among older veterans. The study found that 63% of veterans who underwent E-A-E-T reported at least a 30% reduction in pain, a clinically significant reduction, after treatment compared to only 17% of veterans who underwent cognitive behavioral therapy. Pain reduction was sustained amongst 41% of the EAET participants six months after treatment compared to 14% with the CBT. Additionally, EAET patients reported greater benefits from addressing anxiety, depression, PTSD, and life satisfaction. I mean, that's pretty remarkable. And like I've said, we see this in our practice. Chronic pain and even sometimes autoimmune issues as well as, uh, I would put psoriasis in the same group, are very much linked to trauma or deep stress in the body, however you want to look at it. And it's so important that we don't overlook that. In my book, The Rain Barrel Effect, The De-Stress Protocol, which is the second half of the book that we use in our practice, I, again, I open source that, diet, exercise, stress reduction, toxin removal, rest, emotional-based balance, scientifically-backed supplements, and a success mindset. Four out of the eight deal with stress and the emotions. 
It's that important. It really is. Don't overlook it. If you've been getting better, working on your health, but haven't quite got there, don't overlook the power of addressing emotional-based imbalances. And don't feel bad about it. Don't feel any shame. Don't feel any guilt. This happens to tens of millions, hundreds of millions of people around the world, and you deserve to get well. This is one more way that we can look at that, all right? Hopefully this was helpful. Of course, I'm going to link up the full study at stephencabral.com slash 3101. Hopefully that was helpful. As always, do share this with anyone you feel it can serve. And tomorrow, I'll be back answering all of our community's questions on the Cabral House Calls. Take care, everybody. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.